Welcome to the channel, everyone. Well, today we've got us a 2011 Nissan Rogue, an amazing running little vehicle, but she's got a drivetrain issue. This is the SL all-wheel drive, and right now she's sporting 167,000 miles. All right, and here's a quick look and listen of the engine. Sounds pretty good. Little four-cylinder. Not sure what size it is. I'll look that up a little bit later. But nevertheless, we're going to take this out on the road and listen to it. Sounds like a humming sound, almost like a wheel bearing, but I don't think it's a wheel bearing. All right, so we're driving about 40 and listen to that noise. Hear that? Turn the volume up. That is a drivetrain issue. Boy, it sounds like either... Yeah, it sounds like a wheel bearing, but I don't think it is. I think it's either the drive shaft or the rear end is ready to come out of this all-wheel drive. So we're going to eventually take this back to the garage and jack it up and start looking underneath of it. And also, there's something sticking when I first take off. It's squeaking. Let me get a little faster out through here, and you can listen to this. Sounds like a jet rumbling. hear that give me a thumbs up if you can I'm only doing 45 oh it's really bad right there at 40 so all right so let's take her back and see what we can find out so uh, that's the best I can do with the noise but you can also feel it in the steering wheel you can, you can feel it in the whole car it's just like a really fast rumble vibration sound it could be a wheel bearing but i don't know wheel bearings are a little different than that usually you go left go right it'll go away but this one is a constant no matter how much you turn that wheel matter of fact let's turn it really hard once we get past this traffic here i don't want people to think i'm drunk all right now uh, that noise is there constantly so we know that is not a wheel bearing now, i'll tell you what i want to do one more thing I want to see if the all-wheel drive is binding, so we're at a parking lot here. I'm going to cut it really hard and just verify we don't have anything outside going on. No, she turns nice and easy. Very nice. So that's good to know. So the all-wheel drive is not binding up and causing that vibration. All right, so we got her in the old garage here. A little tight, but it's doable. Beats the ice and snow outside. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to take out the drive line. We're going to take out the front, rear drive shaft, and also this has got a carrier bearing under there. My suspicions are either a universal or a carrier bearing is bad on this. I don't know if the rear end yet is bad, but we'll find out. But I got the wheels up in the air, and I've been spinning them around, and they seem pretty smooth. I don't hear any noise or anything. Uh, same thing on both sides. I got four jack stands plus a jack under there, so I'm good to go. So let's go underneath and I'm going to show you what I've done so far. All right, so there's a nice look at the back. There's the back uh, differential and this drive shaft comes all the way up to the front here. And what do I spy right there? Oh yeah, we got a carrier bearing. Um, kind of surprised to see a carrier bearing in this, but it is all wheel drive. Not surprised to see it, I guess. Uh, my suspicions could be that, and if we follow this all the way up to the front, I'm going to have to probably uh, turn around here real quick. And now we'll follow the drive lane all the way up to the front there. Sorry about that. My floor's all rusty in the way, but there is the uh, differential. I've already unbolted that. It's pretty easy to get to, actually. I used a half-inch uh, ratchet on it and a little bit of an extension, and those are 14-millimeter bolts, and they are right there laying so what we're going to do that's already been disconnected up front there we're going to go ahead and undo the rear and then we're going to take this carrier bearing out this whole unit and then we'll take a gander at that gander where'd that word ever come from i gotta look i gotta google that word gander <laughs> we'll pull that off there these here the bolts have already well they're nuts that one's off on that side, and this one's come off on this side. I believe those are 14. Let me uh, look and see here. I think so. Yep. That one's out on that side, and I got this one loose, and we're going to just try to slide this out. The only thing that's going to hang it up here is this bracket. If I release this rubber bracket off this exhaust, push it off the side, I should be able to slide this universal, uh, this drive shaft, I should say, right down out of there. So we'll see if we can get, we'll get this out of here, and I want to check all this first because... 
still don't think it's the rear end. It's, it's something in here that sounds like to me it's a universal in the drive line. I've heard this a lot of times and I've replaced a lot of universals, but we'll see. All right, so we're on our last carrier bolt now. Uh, I did pull the emergency brake thinking this uh, you, this here would, well, the wheels are still on. And with the emergency brake pulled, I thought that would hold these uh, axles and keep this from turning, but it doesn't, so I had to go way up back up front. I just kind of put a couple of bolts in there to keep this whole thing from turning. That's the only way you can stop this. So we got our last bolt here, and these are all basically uh, 9 16 or 14 mils. That's what I broke them loose with. And we get this last one off, and so surprisingly, they don't have lock nuts on here, or lock washers, or anything. I would would have thought, but there's all four of those kind of laying there. And now, really, all we got to do is uh, I did take some paint and mark, and that's you know put a mark in there. And I did the same thing on the front. You always should do this. And all right, it's ready to come out. So all I got to do is go up there and kind of. Take one bolt out of that carrier bearing there on that one side and kind of slide that bracket out of the exhaust and this whole thing should come out fairly easy and I'm kind of anxious to see how these universals are so let's see if I tap on this see it kind of got a crack there there it goes all right oh well, that was easy enough well let's just check this bear let's just check this one right here Oh wow, there's noise and the dealership couldn't figure it out. What do they got? Who who works at the dealership and can't figure something like this out? They got kids there? Look at this. I can do this, but I cannot uh, move it down whatsoever. Well, there's our noise. Well, I'll be daggone. So they said, well, we checked the wheel bearing and we, we replaced the wheel bearing and we replaced the rotor and there's nothing else we can't figure out what it is it's probably the differential unbelievable this is the problem right here Ugh, that thing is frozen even this way it's i can feel it right there hear that this universal shot well i'll be daggone i'm really happy to find this because this is going to save her a lot of money. So let's go ahead and just yank this whole thing out. Let's go ahead and get the uh, carrier out. Slide this whole thing out. All right, so there's the back. Let's flip around to the front real quick. And there we go. And we'll go ahead and just kind of unscrew these. These are the ones I was telling you about. Kind of put them in there, keep the dry shaft from turning. Now I've already. <laughs> what the. Yeah, whatever works, I guess. <laughs> uh, these two bolts here just keeps the whole thing from turning. These don't have nuts on them, they're just bolts. And there's one right about. Oh gosh, I don't know. You're probably not going to be able to see it. I'm stuck up in there. I'll try it out here. Give me a hand on it. There it is. Yeah, there it comes. It's up in there. You know, I'll, these guys, these YouTubers have these fancy lifts, these half a million dollar garages, never get dirty, working on vehicles. <laughs> Someday I'll have a lift, I don't know. All right, so this is ready to come out, so. Uh, I think what we're gonna try to do is just pull it straight out. I've got the bracket loose on this uh, exhaust. And you can see it got off the side, but I don't think there's going to be enough clearance. So I should be able to just pull this straight out. The only bolt I got is right here left. This carrier bearing, we'll take it out last. I think we can just pull straight all the way out like that and out and uh, look at it. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, I don't know how well you're gonna see it, but we'll slide that whole unit straight out.
And I gotta get back up under here. As I pull on things, I shouldn't be pulling on. There we go. And I'll try not to hit the camera. All right. I love it when a plan comes together. All right, slide on our way out here. Pretty long. Just grab it here. Slide on the out. All right, let's take a look at it. All right, so here's the back of it, and obviously this is. Universal is done. It's completely frozen right here. I cannot turn that that way. You can even feel something there. But forget about turning that in that direction. So there's that and the carrier bearing seems okay. Pick it up here and spin it a little bit. Oh, it's great shape. It's smooth. It's smooth as butter. Let's check the front one now. All right, I haven't checked this one yet. Yeah, this one needs to be replaced too. It's not as bad, but this way I can feel something. You might be able to hear that. Yeah, so we're going to have to replace both universals. The carrier bearing is okay. So there's a couple of small things in there I saw that I need to take care of. But that's where the rumble was. So anytime you have a rumble, it's constant. When you're turning the wheel, it doesn't go away. Check the universals. And also, it doesn't hurt to check that uh, carrier bearing because sometimes they do go bad. All right, since we're under here, we're going to go ahead and check this rear end. Seems okay. Just, you know, typical play. It's got viscous couplings in the back, I believe. And it's got some clutches back here, but not much play there. And I can see the axle's trying to turn, so great. That's okay. So we'll go ahead and order some uh, universals, put new ones in it. And I'll fix a few things here, and we'll put it back together. We'll take it out on the highway and see if that takes care of the noise hey let me know where you're watching from right now all right so it's a new day and there's the old drive shaft and we got one end already disassembled and this end was the one that was making all the racket the noise and look at that cap right there look at that rust and dust yeah that was the problem with that one now um i did take my dremel tool and i have a little tiny uh, wheel and a lot of these, uh, I think what they call this, uh, I want to say staggered, but they're not staggered. They have little grooves that keep the uh, bearings from coming out. You can probably still knock them out, but I just used my ball joint presser here. You can still use a, a regular old press if you got one. Mine is over there, but the car is kind of in the way now. So this actually worked out pretty good. But if you take a Dremel tool, go in there and clean this out a little bit and cut those little grooves that are actually put in there from the factory. Uh, just kind of cut those out. It makes it a little bit easier, but I also put oil in there and once you get it going uh, I usually just uh, Will push it one way push the cap out About like that then push the cap all the way back in and push it on this side Then after that you can usually just take your hammer or something and kind of Knock this back and forth to loosen up these caps and when you get one of them all the way out the caps usually just come out and also you can have some vice grips to grip them. But usually I just take something and knock them the rest of the way out. And all that. And with that there, I am using a big old socket here. I'm kind of sticking over there onto that there. That's how I'm doing that. I didn't really record it because I didn't think there'd be much interest, you know, in that. But there are some other videos on YouTube about this. Whatever you do, make sure you mark it, you know, with some paint so you know which side goes where and all that but yeah that universal there was pretty much shot 
probably been on there since a lifetime. Matter of fact, the paint markings were the original paint marks from the factory. So uh, you don't have to have a Dremel tool. You can still probably push them out uh, with a C cut, with a uh, you know something like this, a kit, ball joint presser, and get them out with no problem. And also, if you take one apart and you find out that it's so bad that the uh, Universal has either worn part of this down or cracked it. You're going to have to buy this whole assembly, and guess how much you're going to pay? Yep, that's right. This is why Nissan says there's no option. That these are not interchangeable. You can't change these out. But someone said, oh yeah, watch me. And they decided to go ahead and say, we got a kit for this. So I actually got a kit from one of the local parts stores. It'll be here tomorrow. It's like 60 bucks. Two universals and some nuts and bolts and all that. And with the newer ones, the clips go on the inside. I'll show you tomorrow. Go on the inside, like here, on the inside here, and it keeps this from coming out. So what I might do is go ahead and maybe just show you real quick, briefly, how I'm going to take that end apart and all that. So, But I did get it apart. It wasn't too bad. I did try to take a chisel and go in here and cut down those little places that were pushed in from the factory. And they're not very big. They're probably not even a sixteenth of an inch. There's like six of them. And we should push them out. Uh, that way you can still get it going. So that's that. All right. Maybe you can see it. But there's little places cut in there. They call them staked. It's a staked universal, whatever. It's just code for meaning you'll have to spend more money to fix it. But I usually just take the dremel tool and go in here and clean it up a little bit. Cut them down a little bit. And you can see one of them right there in the corner. That one's down. Okay. Basically, that's how I'm going to do all four. Uh, universals uh, the caps on here to get them kind of cleaned up a little bit so they'll slide out a little bit better all right so here's how I typically do it got my ratchet on there by the way I'm using a half inch got a socket there put my needle on here and just kind of turn it until it pops through you'll hear it go bang or make a little noise there, there it went so push it all the way through until it stops and now we'll take it off Ugh. You see, that's all the way as far as it'll go. And now we'll spin it back around this way. And you can see that that's pushed in all the way there. And now what we're going to do, we're going to push this one all the way out like that one is there. Now it gives something to work with. And I like to do this in here first. I like to leave this piece on last because if you do this first and try to get this out, this thing's going to be bouncing around and everything. It's nice to get this uh piece of hair off that's just how i like to do it so go ahead and set this up real quick maybe my camera battery will last we'll see if we can do this with one take and you just gotta have patience you know take your time at it no need to be in a big hurry i mean where you gotta go right <laughs> unless you gotta go to work like some people still do i don't know all right so here we go with that all right, so go ahead and push it back through the other way. There it goes right there. I felt it. And there it goes the rest of the way through. On the other side. And there it is. So. And see? That's all the way out on that side. Now, as far as that'll go on that, well, it was on that side, but now I can take my hammer and set this up and just hit this a little bit and it'll start to work back and forth. I'll shoot some grease in here and you just gotta work it back and forth until it comes off. One will pop out eventually. Alright, there it is. It's off. I'll flip it around and. That came off easier than I thought. So it's a good thing I got paint marks in there because you can forget where these go. 
And uh, I'll take a chisel or something if I can find it here. I just had it. We'll knock this rest weight out. I got a socket here. I'm just kind of leaving it set on like that. Kind of knock it out. There we go. There's that one. So the flange is in good shape, which is great. We'll clean that up. And now all we gotta do is knock this one out. Same process, push it through back and forth, work it back and forth. Take your hammer. I know I got a claw hammer. I got 15 hammers in here and I grabbed the claw hammer. But just work it back and forth and once you get it so far, these will come out. Now you could try to take vice, a pair of vice grips and grip them, but boy, a lot of times they're, they just will, still won't come out. You just gotta work them back and forth and do your best you can. There we go. And we'll do the same thing on this side. Nice thing about this is you can actually hit the universal here. We'll knock it out the rest of the way because it ain't going to matter at this point. Get that one rest of the way out real quick. Just about out. All right, that one wasn't playing nice. All right, and now we'll spin it around, knock the cap, press the way out, and there we go. All right, we still have our paint marks. We'll clean this up tomorrow. I don't see any damage. I will just wipe it off here. The new uh, kit will be here tomorrow. The universal and all that, so everything's good. And uh, didn't hit anything. Now, if you look closely right there, you can see where it was kind of little dot right there where that universal was almost hitting that so we caught that just in time there's one right there too i don't think you're going to be able to see it but a little shiny place right there if you uh let this go too far you know this universal breaks it'll snap this off and you're going to have to spend a lot of money for this whole unit so all right so we'll be back when the new stuff comes in we'll assemble it and put it back together all right so here is what the kit consists of you get some bolts and you get your drive shafts, universals here. And you have these little tiny clips that go on the inside. And this what hold this was actually what holds them in. And on the inside here you have a little groove right about there. And that's what keeps these in. So we're gonna go ahead and stick one of them on. I'm gonna go ahead and do it off camera and let you know how it went. Then we'll come back and do the other end. Probably do it on camera. Shouldn't be too bad to do. First thing I'm going to do is going to wrap some tape around one end here so we don't lose any of these when we're putting them on. There we go. I'll wrap some tape around this one here because we'll, we'll do this side, but not very big. They're, they're re relatively small and these do not have grease fittings, so uh, take it or leave it. So I'll take it. Better than the alternative of spending $400 or $300 on another drive shaft just to get universal. So let's go see if we can get these in. Well, that didn't work out too good. Those were not the right ones. These are the right ones. I had to wait about three days. And the other ones were the right dimensions across. The problem was the cap. The caps were not big enough. These are bigger caps. They should go in here. And uh, let's see what we got with these. Same setup. We have little clips here that you'll have to stick on the inside of the drive shaft once I get all this opened up and here are the little clips and these go right here on the inside and all that and we even have a grease fitting here interesting I wonder if I can put a standard grease fitting in there but these will fit right in here kind of like that that is the right size boy now I found out the ones that you saw earlier that I had to take back, those were for the Dorman drive shaft that they already sell for this vehicle. This is a, a genuine, still a Nissan factory drive shaft, so you got to be careful with that. So, Dorman sells a drive shaft. They have their own Universals. OEM sells their drive shaft from Nissan. These are the ones you have to get and i'll put a link at the bottom here so you guys can kind of look out for that and you have to measure the diameter of the caps on the outside I'm not sure how big these are but these are bigger you'll know when you get your new ones if you hold it up here like this and it goes right in there and wiggles around that's not the right ones you want something that fits in there nice and snug like that 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this on, then we'll come back here and see how easy it is. All right, so we got this one on, and I'm not gonna lie, I was nervous as AF. Yeah, it took me a couple tries to figure out the best way to do this, so what I had to do was, uh, I tried to put the universal in, and tried to put the caps in, and kind of push it together like that. Over this, that didn't work, then I put one in, and tried to put the other one in, and that didn't work, so eventually what I had to do, I just left the cap on this end and put it in here like that and kind of held my finger there and knocked this in as far as it was go, would go or put the vise on it. And actually, if you uh, take a Dremel tool, I've got one of these guys here, clean these out a little bit, sand them down just a little bit because it does make these newer caps go in there a lot easier. So that got me in like Flynn with a grin. And uh, for the most part, I took a socket it kind of tapped on each side, tapped on that side, tapped on that side. So I kind of got these grooves where I want them there, uh, right here, for these little clips. And these little clips, what you can do is put uh, one on first once you get this all the way in. Put the clip on. And that way, when you tap this one here on and get it back in, this one here will push this side and stop it where it's supposed to be. Then you can put this clip on. Now, these clips go on like this because they want this piece here outwards they want this ring all the way on the inside back in here because if you do it this way i guess it could come off but the clips went on really well and let's see if i can hold my light up here we can actually see the clips there see them in there and uh it's not binding or anything it feels pretty good and all that so that's how i did it so basically i started i put a I left one cap on the universal slid it up in there then I uh, kind of knocked it in there a little bit, universal, slid it up in there, then I uh, kind of knocked it in there a little bit. Well, actually what I did, I'll, we'll, do, we'll do the shaft here, the, we'll hook the end of it here up, and I'll show you how to do it. It's kind of hard to explain, but uh, just so you know, took a little finagling, finagling, but I did get it. So let's go ahead and put the uh, rest of it here together, and I'll kind of give you a tip here how I did it. All right, I think that should be all right. But you get the idea. You can take sandpaper. It'll work just as well. But uh, these little rollers on these Dremel tools, they like to fly off. I usually put some duct tape under there. Slide that over there. And it keeps on there pretty well. So there is that. And now we'll go ahead and stick this on here. Should be a little bit easier than before. When you're putting these together, you have to kind of... When you're putting them together for the first time, you have to kind of fool around with a wild tub. Makes, try to figure out what make, makes it work first. That's what I'm trying to say. Then after that, you kind of get the idea how you should be doing it efficiently after that. So everything looks pretty clean here. So let's go ahead and get this on. All right, let's go ahead and get this tape off. And uh, get these on. Hopefully... It'll go on fairly easy. The tape just kind of helps to keep the caps on, you know. And you gotta be really careful because if you get one of these caps to slide off, you push it back on, it doesn't want to go the way, then the bearing has uh, come loose on the inside. You gotta take the cap back off and kind of readjust it. So, uh, where's my white mark? There it is. And there's the white mark on this. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take uh, this top one off, I guess. And the white mark goes like that. We'll slide this in on this side, like like this, and get started like that. All right. So there's that. I might take the hammer here and just kind of tap on it just to help you get it kind of started. So there is that. And now I'll take my clamp here and I'll kind of push this all the way on here for now all right so i think you can kind of see that so i want to put my clip on right there and uh i've got my flange here got the dots where i want i'm gonna slide this on like this actually i'm gonna go like this and push it in there like that kind of get it started on there then i'll see if i can get this all the way in if i can i'll either tap it or put put the vice grips back uh vice grips the the clamp back on it you really just got to figure out what works best for you. Uh, this is how I'm kind of experimenting. So I uh, cleaned this out a little bit more with a Dremel tool just to make sure it's going to be nice and clean. So let me see if I can get that on there. So this is basically how I got started. I put the cap on there and I kind of let this go back and forth a little bit. 
And as I'm pushing on this, pushing it in, you can see the cap going in. And I'm making sure this is not in the bind. And that's how, you know, you got to do it. You, gotta, you just got to do it really slow. And like I said, I've got the clip on that side, so that can't be pushed out too much further. But I'll have to use the big uh, clamp, C-clamp here. The, the uh, big one that I was using before, we'll have to use that on here to actually push that rest of the way in there. So I'll go ahead and do that. And hopefully this side will be done. All right, see, I don't know if you can see that, but it's going in. All right. And we're good. I'm watching this clip over here when it kind of seats. And I know, man, that's about as far as I want to go. And there we go. And I'll check this side over here. And it looks like we're good here. And you can see the little groove right there. That's where the clamp goes on. Wow. I don't think I want to do this job again. I'll tell you that. So, but... You know, it's a lesson learned. Hopefully you can use this video to help you out. All right, so that clip is in. And one final thought here is when you get everything together, uh, just verify that it, you know, works freely. This side here was a little tight. This side was fine. So I just tucked my big socket and kind of tapped on this side and pushed that cap in. And I went on this side. I did the same thing. Kind of worked them back and forth until everything felt really good. So... Oh, I'm so happy. Now I can do the other side, the other end. I'm not going to show you how to do that. But like I said, this is just how I'm doing it. You may have a better setup. You may have a better garage. You may have a fancy garage. A fancy smashy one. But I don't. So, uh, But the clips are in. And just make sure you put them right like this on there. The, the little gap goes in the front. So I'm trying to say there. Right up on the front. So make sure the gap it goes like this. So. All right, and you do get some instructions with these clips and all that. But, well, I'll tell you what, my third grader could have done a better job of doing this. I don't know what the heck that is, but it's barely legible. But you do get instructions on how that's supposed to work. So, all right, yay! We'll save some money anyway. All right, so there we go. Uh, talk to me about... 20 minutes to get everything in or just right even got the grease fitting in with grease and everything's perfect no binding just like it should be so as I always like to say it's out with the old and in with the better all right let's get this on and just like that we're back in everything's torqued everything's lined up there's the rear and there is the front so not too bad to do but uh, really you need a lot more room than i'm working with if you're going to do this job you really need to get the vehicle up just a little bit higher to be comfortable so other than that before we take it out i've got a few other things here that i've got to do to the vehicle there's a couple of rattles we've got a brake cable in the back we've got to fix and we'll do all that off camera and uh, fix a few other little small things on this vehicle and then we'll take it out the road and just see how quiet it is and see how it sounds. All right, everyone, we're on our first drive. Uh, we just took off and uh, we're at 30 miles an hour already. And right about now, I would hear that awful noise. And now we're up to 40 and that noise is gone. What a difference. Can you hear how quiet it is in here now? Compared to what it was before. So that took care of the issue. I had to do some other things. I had to go into there and clean up and weld some things and get rid of some rusty heat shields that were ready to fall off and stuff like that. But man, we are back in business. Sounds great. And uh, right there's 40. And before it was so bad, I could feel in the steering wheel. It's smooth now. So those universals really did make a difference. Let's get out of here and go a little faster. All right, so there is 55, almost 60 on this beautiful Sunday, and it's quiet on the inside. I can't believe how easy and smooth it rides. It's amazing what universals will do and make your car feel like you want to junk it or something or trade it in. And that's exactly what the dealer said. <laughs> yeah, well, they were wrong. So goes to show a little know-how and some research. You can fix about anything yourself. Almost everything, but not quite. So uh, that's it, guys, for the video. I'm happy this turned out pretty good. Now, your other option is if you want to spend uh, anywhere from four to $800 on a new drive shift, including the universals, knock yourself out. But this is one way you can save some money 
if you want to attempt it. You might want to buy an extra universal joint just in case you mess one of them up. Maybe buy three if you're going to do both of them. So other than that, that's it guys for the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.